My ski lovers, we have the big one coming for you for heading to the Rockies or living in the Rockies. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. We're going to break down the expected snow and the timeline here from this big system coming to the Front Range and into the Rocky Mountains themselves. On the southern side of this, it's going to turn windy everywhere that the storm is affecting, but that's also going to increase a big-time fire risk for places in the desert southwest and southern plains. So we're going to have that update and outlook for you. Also, a severe weather threat in parts of the northern plains as a result of this. So a lot to break down with this storm. As always, at the end of the video, we're going to have a high-resolution look at the United States and Canada, both with future radar and temperatures over the next 72 hours. So stick around to the end of the video for that. If you want to stay updated on the weather as we roll out of winter into spring severe weather season and then eventually into hurricane season, you come to the right place. Hit that subscribe button if you're interested. And if you want to put your uh, location, I would love to know where you're tuning in from and what the weather is doing. would love to see your weather report in the comments. So please do that and again don't forget your location so we can see what the weather's doing where you are watching from here's the deal winter storm alerts out for a lot of the rockies into utah as well we have the purple this is winter weather advisory extending from springdale into tory salt lake city just into extreme southern idaho also into the colorado utah border that includes moab and the national parks involved in this i think every mighty five park is included in this ion down here close to springdale then we have uh bryce canyon and then we have the arches and uh capital reef over here and then canyonlands boy canyonlands was escaping me for a second canyonlands capital uh and arches right next to each other really cool spot if you've never been i highly recommend it when it's not snowing although it is cool when it snows as well Winter Weather Advisory from Grand Junction into Telluride, right along the Arizona border into Colorado, Trinidad. We have Winter Storm Watch in play for into Pueblo, Colorado Springs, Fla uh, Flagler into Denver, Estes Park. This extends into Wyoming as well. Cheyenne, we are under that Winter Storm Watch, meaning that we're going to have the potential for a plowable snow and the likelihood for a plowable snow sometime in the next 36 hours. And that is really going to ramp up as we get into tomorrow. Here's the high res future radar here for this event, at least the first half of the event. I'll show you the second half in just one second. And here we go on March 13th. This is going to be on Wednesday morning, five o'clock in the morning. And you see the snow starting to ramp up in southwest Wyoming. Also, the snow here in the blue and the white starting to get going. It's going to start to intensify this storm. You see that swirl there. This is Wednesday afternoon, 4 o'clock. This is local time. Estes Park through Denver, we have some snow that arrives into Casper. I want to focus your attention as well right on through here. This is where we could have severe weather breaking out as we get into the latter stages of Wednesday into early Thursday. So note the time. This is 9, 10 o'clock. This is going to be mountain times. It's more like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock central time. So here we go. All of these little kidney bean shaped guys are supercells that will have the potential to produce tornadoes if they stay right along that front. So that's going to be something that we're watching late tomorrow night, Wednesday night, March 13th, especially in northeast Kansas into Missouri, into Iowa, and then the parts in, of eastern Nebraska, maybe as far north as extreme, extreme southeast South Dakota and southwest Minnesota. So that is that. Note that that line quickly congeals. That tornado threat will go down and it kind of turns into a damaging wind threat as that kind of rolls through southern Iowa. Note all the snow still going and cranking up back to the west. We're going to have more on that snowstorm coming up in just one second. But through that part, at least of the event, I want to get you an update on where the severe weather potential is. And we showed you the high resolution future radar as a result. Here we go with the official Storm Prediction Center outlook. And this is going to roll right on through uh, just south of Omaha, at least at level two. That's where those supercells could pop into Harrisonville uh, to the west of Columbia, Topeka, and then through St. Joseph and then right along the Nebraska-Kansas border here. Everywhere else, we still have a non-zero non severe weather threat. But again, it's not zero. We're still going to be watching that. Just the best opportunities there are going to be in yellow. That two out of five on the severe weather scale. And that is going to be for Wednesday, March 13th, especially late into the afternoon, early into the evening. So I mentioned earlier in the video, why is this setup so right for us? Well, we do have a nice big chunk of low pressure kind of rolling rolling out through here and then working its way up but it's also this guy that big area of high pressure sliding out of southern canada and we're fast forwarding into wednesday and thursday so this is the second part of the, of the event so yes it is still snowing 
early Thursday morning along parts of the Front Range and into the Rockies. There's our chunk of high pressure. There's our low pressure. Note these lines here. These are lines of equal pressure. We call these isobars. They are tightly packed. And when you get a big change in pressure over a relatively short distance, you increase the winds. And that's the reason why we're going to be so windy, really all the way from the four corners through Texas, Oklahoma, through the plains as well. And then watch what happens here. Big chunk of high pressure kind of slides back over toward Montana into the Dakotas. We still have low pressure here, and that keeps that wind out of the northeast. Well, what do we have right there? Those are the mountains. So we have that northeasterly, easterly wind running right into the mountains. That gives us, we call that upslope effect or graphic lift meteorologically, and that helps to give that little oomph, that push. We rise that air, we give that air that nudge, and when that air rises, it cools, condenses, and enhances the snowfall rates, the precip rates. In this case, it's cold enough for snow. So again, that's one of the reasons why, especially in the higher elevations of the Rockies, we're talking about maybe eclipsing two feet of snow. So here we go. We can certainly get more than five inches of snow in Denver. Official forecast is uh, about 6 to 12. This is the high-resolution model forecast. And you see Estes Park, we could pick up a foot, maybe 18 inches of snow. Uh, also down closer to the southern Colorado in the higher peaks, anywhere from 12 to 18 inches of snow. And then on the western side, because again, we have the downside sloping effect then on the other side it helps to dry us out a little bit more we're still going to get some snow in grand junction and a telluride just a few inches that's why we have winter weather advisories on the west side of the rockies and then we'll get crushed on the east side of the rockies especially into the higher elevations because again we have the wind coming here then it gets lifted up and then we get crazy snow out uh, along the base of the mountains as well. It's kind of that same effect on how the Sierras get rocked when we have those atmospheric rivers. It's kind of the opposite, although we don't have that moisture source, obviously, since the wind is coming out of the middle of the country. Here is the wind now, and this is where it becomes problematic. Again, travel is going to be really, really difficult in Colorado and Wyoming because not only do we have the wind, uh, the snow, we have the wind. We might not officially reach blizzard criteria. There's a certain number we have to get. We have to get 35 mile per hour winds sustained for three hours and have visibilities reduced to less than a quarter of a mile. We may have that intermittently. Regardless, we're going to have blizzard-like conditions or near whiteout conditions through a lot of Colorado as the snow is falling. And then no Note those 40 to 50 mile per hour gusts down here. Now remember, a couple weeks ago we had the bigger fires break out in the panhandle of Texas. It does not take much for fires to spread if they get started. It is very, very dry in this area. We all know it if you're living there. And again, if something gets going with those winds, this is going to help it breathe and it's going to help to spread it. All those embers. And you saw how quickly the one a couple of weeks ago got started and going. So again, make sure you're being very, very careful. The wind then spreads up through Colorado into Wyoming, Nebraska even. We're going to get wind gusts through Thursday, late Wednesday into Thursday, uh, about 40 to 50 miles an hour. So again, a ton of wind coming down the pipeline all right fire threat for the rest of tuesday it's elevated you see it right here it's this color that starts to pop up in yellow a little bit of orange so that's the fire threat for tuesday watch what happens though on wednesday this is as the storm really starts to ramp up and again all fire threat comes down overnight because that's when you have the relative humidity is going back up it's overnight clear skies calm winds that you get the relative humidity and temperature to kind of meet we breed saturation and it helps the moisture and the low levels of our atmosphere when it's dry out the sun comes up we really dry out the atmosphere and then you get the wind going and this product here that i'm showing you kind of takes into effect into account the relative humidity being low, the wind being cranked up, vegetation being dry, things like that. And you see where we have that footprint for the fire threat, especially in the darker red. But this is going to extend from uh, western Oklahoma into west Texas, into areas south of Albuquerque, into Arizona, even parts of Mexico. And then here we go from uh, into extreme southwest Texas, including Carlsbad, and then right along again the southeast Mex uh, New Mexico border there. So again, a big time fire threat potential tomorrow into the next couple of days as the system ramps up. So now I want to take this full and get my head out of the way and I want to show you what we can expect across the country. And again, most of the focus of this video has been in the West because that is where the, uh, the amount of snow or the 
active weather is going to be. But we are going to watch some rain chances start to increase uh, in East Texas and then through Chicago, Detroit. This is going to be Thursday, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. This is that whole eastern part of the system. So it does get a little wet in Detroit and from Chicago, maybe on the west side of Houston as well. The rain then expands into the northeast. We still have the snow back in Denver because that's where we start to get that area of high pressure to move right through there. And then we get that easterly wind, northeasterly wind, and helping that upslope effect. And then you see what happens. There's Friday, 3 o'clock. We have the rain from about uh, southern Pennsylvania right through Roanoke into Houston, New Orleans, right into the mid-Atlantic in parts of the deep south. Now, temperature-wise, here we go, early Wednesday morning, March 13th. So waking up tomorrow, you see what happens, and you see the divide in temperatures. Again, it is really cold, or at least cold enough for some snow uh, in the west the warmth surging back here, we could have temperatures getting to around 90 in Florida. We could have 90 starting to pop up in extreme southwest Texas as well. Note the warmth start to erode. This is the 14th early in the morning. It's still very, very warm into the south and west. Cold up here, the big time cold, still well up into Canada. And then we eventually are going to dislodge that. We talked at length over the last couple of weeks really dating back since late in February that we were likely going to see one more big blast of cold air to the eastern two-thirds of the United States. We talked about this in yesterday's video as well. If you want to check that out, I'll post that at the end of this. Uh, and it highlights, again, that there are more things biting. The things that we look for for a big-time pattern change are coming into line. And we talk about that in that video. But you see, there's Friday, March 15th at 3 o'clock. We still have all the warmth down here, the cold breaking free. And then we have a lot of cold coming as we get into the 18th, 19th, and 20th to correspond with the first day of spring astronomically. Alrighty, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. If you do, if you found this content helpful or interesting, I really hope you did. Let me know. Also, hit that thumbs up button. Again, if you want to join us and take this weather journey have this weather conversation as we venture into the end of winter into severe weather season into hurricane season without the hype in the garbage you've come to the right place hit that subscribe button for me and we'll catch you next time